Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage. Well, I'm back from vacation, <laughs> but as all the vacations, it had only one problem. It was too short. <laughs> anyway, so we're back at work and we are in the Rusty Beauty's shop and right away we became pretty busy. So look what's around me. There's my Spitfire behind me, Nick's Miata over there in the back. I don't know if you see it, that's the TR3 that I got from Sheftash waiting for its turn. Here we have the TR4 behind me that we're working with uh, David on. And then we have my TR6 behind it. We have uh, 1969 GT6 that I worked on the weekend right after I came back from vacation. Saturday and Sunday right away I started working. And inside there we have another beauty. So this is gonna be our subject today. Oh, and by the way, my GT6 over there, of course, that's part of the interior now. Anyway, so this beauty is 1975 Triumph Speedfire 1500, and it is a father-son project, but what's special about this one is not father-son, it's father and son's project. Rob is the father, and he has two twins. One is Declan, as far as I know. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the other guy, but we're gonna figure it out eventually. So the father with his twins, they bought this car and they uh, started it and it ran for a while. They didn't drive it much because it had other issues. So they took out the differential and actually they brought it to me and I um, changed the bearings and seals on it and they put it back. So they've done a few things on the car and they decided also to change the wiring harness and they actually got a wiring harness from uh, Advanced Auto Wire, the modified wiring harness with the centralized fuse block and relays and stuff, you know, it's not the original to the car. So they started working on it themselves, I believe with the help of a neighbor or friend from their area. But for one reason or another, they decided to bring it to me actually to finish the job. So as you can see here, the wiring inside is a little bit messy. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to figure it out. So nothing is connected. They just run wires here and there, but nothing is connected. So I guess we're going to have to uh, start from scratch here. So without further ado, let's get crackle locking. So you see what's going on here. There's lots of wires that they just run from inside to wherever they thought they were gonna be. Let me see, I'm trying to untangle them here. That's the headlights, I believe. I'm just gonna untangle everything. Uh, okay. So they've done something. <laughs> they hooked up the wires for the alternator. And this might be the ignition, I don't know. The two kids marked all the wires. So this is, what does it say? W14 power to ignition system. So that I'm assuming is the one that goes to the coil. Anyways, that's what's in the engine bay. And here, this is where they mounted the power block or fuse block or whatever this is called. And as you can see here, they marked most of the wires, which is great because uh, apparently Rob, the father, is colorblind. So for him, the color coding means nothing. So. The kids marked everything for him. So yeah, so I guess what we're gonna do, like I'm not gonna hold you here for the whole process, but I'm just gonna be giving you updates every once in a while. So I think, first of all, I'm gonna remove the hard top because it is just sitting here. They put it on because yesterday when they trailered the car here, um, they were afraid that it might rain. So they put the hard top. So first of all, I'm gonna remove it so I have better access in and out. And then we're gonna, pull all the wires here, we're gonna divide it into branches because right now 
I'm not criticizing, I'm not criticizing what they've done, but you see here, um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks to me like some wires are going one way, some others are going different way. For example, this one is going around the hose. So anyway, we will see. All right, so the hard top is taken off and I opened the boot here because Rob showed me some stuff here. So this is the remainder of the kit that came from advanced out to wire. Uh, some gauges here, the dash. I took out some of the gauges because I wanted to know what goes where, just so I can route my wires properly. And also in the box, there was a manual. Rob also scanned it and I have it in PDF so I can put it on my big screen over there so I can see it better. But anyway, now when we went, I went through the manual a little bit, read like diagonally, <laughs> but something here is important to know. A ship, the wiring leaving the panel is grouped into three bundles. One bundle contains 22 wires, one contains 10 wires, and the third bundle consists of only one wire. The 10 wire bundle terminate under the hood or at the front of the car. All of the wires in the 22 wire bundle terminate inside the car, primarily under the dash. And the single wire bundle, the yellow with red, is for electric fuel pump. So, yellow with red, this one is for electric fuel pump that we don't have. So we just are gonna cut it, I guess because we don't want to have extra wires running nowhere. But what I see here is that Rob and the boys run some wires into the engine bay. So we said in the engine bay, there needs to be 10 wires. But when I come here, I can count nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine wires. So we have to, first of all, I'm gonna have to check if the wires that are run this direction are the correct ones and second i have to find which one is the missing wire i was expecting that these bundles that they're talking about were going to be somehow separated here but they are not so that's what my first job is going to be i'm going to determine which wires are the 22 which ones are the 10 and we're going to separate them somehow so we can keep going from there okay something doesn't make sense to me so I'm just gonna go, I'm not gonna go with the menu, I'm gonna go with my own strategy here. So um, these are the actually eight wires that have been run by the boys all the way to the engine bay. There was a ninth wire that was run from the alternator back under the dash and it was terminated here. So I just pulled it back from the alternator. Uh, I just pulled it back and now there are like a few wires there, three wires from the alternator they're just sticking forward. We're gonna deal with them later. You can see these three wires, they're just soldered to the alternator, but one of them, this one was going in. So we are left with eight wires here. I pulled them out of this uh, shroud or whatever it is. So we have two, four, six, eight, but you can see here that two and two are the same. Two blue with white and two blue with red and these are for the headlights actually high beam and low beam so separate power for the two headlights for whatever reason and this is for the horn the purple with yellow and this i haven't identified yet the black with purple the black with green i have to see what that is this is the main power and the white is the ignition power so that goes to the ignition coil so this is everything that has been run to the engine bay so far so i'm gonna have to identify the rest and this is everything else some of these were run this way for whatever reason i just put everything back now and i printed a small schematic here that i'm gonna start marking now each and every wire where it's leaving the power block which is here so once I identify the wire and route it the proper way, I'm going to mark it here as done. And I'm just going to go and mark each and every one wire here 
when it did, when it goes wherever it needs to go. Only the wires where they're leaving the block. And then I guess we're gonna start going circuit by circuit and running them to the proper place. So that's what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> A little bit different strategy. Alright, so all the wires that come out of the power block have been identified. Some of them are not going to be used, so I crossed them here. This is, for example, for cooling fan. We don't have electric cooling fan, but it has three wires that are dedicated for it. One goes directly to the fan, the other one goes to manual fan switch and temperature switch, and the third one is for fan indicator lamp. So these three wires are not going to be used. They, so they come here in this branch. All these wires here are not going to be used. Or at least they're not going to be used as plant here. Because some of them we might use. For example, this one is, is for cigarette lighter. And I don't think we have a cigarette lighter in this car. But we have a radio. So we might use it for the um, memory of the radio. Because it's permanent power. And who knows, we might even install a USB uh, plug somewhere so the boys can charge their phones or whatever. Some other wires here that are not going to be used. This is for fuel pump. You see it has the inertia switch and cutout switch. So these three are not going to be used. This one here, the black, is ground for the whole board. So if this goes bad, <laughs> if this ground goes bad, none of the relays are going to work and stuff. So we need to make sure that it is grounded properly. Uh, then these three here are the ones for here where we have temperature gauges and stuff like that but these are only the wires that come out of the board there's lots of wires that are between a gauge for example and and a temperature sender for example so they're not part of this uh wiring here they are loose in a box in the back of the car so these also will have to be run from the gauge to the sender or whatever. For now, we are just dealing with the wires that come out of the block. So anyways, these three are for these gauges here. These three are for hazards and lamps on the tachometer and speedometer. For example, high beam indicator. Uh, this, I believe, is the alternator charging warning light uh, and the purple one is for the hazard switch which I don't know where it goes so I'm gonna have to figure out but just branched here then we have another branch here that goes out of the car there but all these are for the column mounting switches the signal and the high beam low beam sw uh, switch here this one and this one this is I believe for the high beam low beam switch and there's oh this one is for the signals so these wires need to be connected to these wires. Okay, yeah, you're right. These are way too many wires here for the column mounted switches. And that's because these two are for the headlight switch, which is here, actually, not there. <laughs> so these will have to come together with this. And then we have three more here underneath that are for uh, the ignition switch, the back of the ignition switch. So I'm just gonna tape them together now with a little bit of tape, but I'm not gonna wrap them completely because like I said, there's gonna be more wires, for example, from the ignition switch to a gauge or from a gauge to a sender or stuff like that. Oh, and there's one more wire. This is white with red over there. So this one needs to go through the bulkhead as well and go in the engine bay i don't remember what was that white with red so that's to the starter so that's the trigger for the solenoid on the starter so this needs to go that way and of course there's going to be more wires that are from from the signal switch for example they need to go through the bulkhead as well 
for the two front signals the marker lights i believe yeah the marker lights they're branched off this red wire so this red wire is for the illumination on the dash but also needs to branch and continue through the bulkhead to go to the marker lights in the front and go to the back to the marker lights in the back here underneath i see i believe this is the rear harness so we might just reuse this i don't know as long as they work properly so we don't need to make a mess of the interior as well to run more wires so so as all these wires are run i'm gonna start running now the other ones i just need to find what goes where on the dash because it was taken apart when i got the car so i need to make sure that i know where the fuel gauges are and all the switches like i know the fuel gauge and then all the temperature gauge these are they need to be hooked up egr this one is not going to be used for the brake warning light we have a wire dedicated for that uh, here at the back is the voltage stabilizer i guess this is for the hazard switch and i have to figure out where the wipers go and all that and all these are the wires for that so let me get crack -a on running all these extra wires too. Oh, one more thing I forgot. So it looks like in the original harness of the car, there was a resistor wire or there was a ballast somewhere underneath. I don't know because this coil, I brought my multimeter to check it. So it is 1.5 ohm, which means it is for ballasted system. So you have a ballast, which creates a resistance in the line and reduces the voltage to six, six volts but only while you're cranking the car with the key at that time there's another wire that comes here and it bypasses the resisted wire and at that time we send 12 volt to the coil which makes it produce higher amperage and then when the car starts and you just return the key to the on position to the ignition position then the bypass gets disconnected and now power to the coil is supplied only through the ballasted uh, wire so here we have two options we either switch the coil to a 12 volt coil or 3 ohm coil or we have to find that ballast i don't think there was ballast here i don't know how speed fires work but i don't think there was a ballast i think there was ballasted wire which remained on the original harness and now we don't have it anyways i'm gonna go online and i'm gonna find the schematic to find out whether there was a ballasted wire or a ballast on this on the speed fire and if there was a ballast we're gonna find it and use it but if there was a wire then we have to change the coil and this power block can work either way so you can see here the coil you can either send this uh, white wire 14 gauge white wire directly to the coil or you can run it through a ballast and then you need another wire which is white with blue i believe that goes directly to the starter solenoid which is right here white with blue and this way the starter solenoid once you start cranking it makes this white with blue wire live and it powers the coil with 12 volts directly when you stop cranking this power cuts off on the white with blue and then there's only the white wire through a resistor supplying power to the coil so we can make it work either way but the problem is i don't think we have a resistor here i think it was a resistor wire okay so i found this diagram for spitfire 1500 uh 75 triumph spitfire blah, 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 blah. so i found it on uh, triumph on triumphspeedfire.com it's a great source for information thanks to whoever created that and maintains it it is really really helpful so anyways i was right this is how it worked so the pink with white that is still on the coil when it's cut is our ballast wire this is the one but it has been cut and the white with yellow comes directly from the starter from the starter solenoid so unfortunately we're gonna have to 
find a different coil for here and just use the direct power through this white wire. All right, so I went online to familiarize myself with what goes where on the dash because I've never worked on a 1500 before and I think this one is the closest. However, um, there's some things that don't match. So this is the hazard switch. This is the illumination where it says hazard, uh, headlamps, fuel and temperature gauges. These are, I have those. However, looks like these are four here and we only have three right here. But this configuration is the same. This is only three, that's fine. And here we have the hazard, we have the hazard illumination or whatever this is called. This is where the windshield switch, windshield wiper switch goes and it is still there, it's hanging. So this is where it goes. We're missing the illumination that says wash, I believe. I think we're missing that. This I found, this is the indicator for signals left and right. This is where the choke goes, the, cho the choke cable. For the center, we have this plastic part here with the heat controls. It is here, that's it. And these are the heat controls. This is the heater switch. I never knew that this is how it works. We're gonna get there. Well, anyways, this is what we have. And then the third on the right, the third part of the dash, doesn't have any holes in it. So what I'm missing also is the real start switch that I believe goes here. I saw it somewhere on some of the pictures here. Um, I don't know where. Anyway, on one of the pictures I saw it. So I believe the real start needs to come here but I believe it went bad and these are expensive to replace. So somebody replaced it with this switch because this switch I found, um, it wasn't mounted here, but I'm assuming it goes there because that's the only hole that we don't have anything for. So we'll decide what we want to do because we, we don't need on off switch for the dash illumination, right? We need the real start, even though there's going to be LED lights. So this cannot be really dimmed. But anyways, we'll see. Maybe we're gonna install this switch again to turn them on and off, which doesn't make sense. I'd rather connect them permanently and just not dim them, but then this switch is gonna do nothing here. Anyways, we're gonna figure that out. Now I have an idea what wire to run where under the dash. All right, um, I haven't been filming a lot. I've done quite a bit of work here. But these two guys here are making lots of noise, so I can't film. A chef and a doctor, you can imagine the kind of noise around. <laughs> but perfection. Perfection, yeah. So Chef Tash and Dr. Carburetor <laughs> dealing with a TR4. Anyway, uh, they're filming their own video and I keep quiet for them. So now they're keeping quiet for me, so I can explain a little bit what I've done here. Oh, okay, it's tight here. So, I ran quite a bit of wiring here. I just bundled these, the ones that we're not using for now, and I hung them here so they're out of my way. But you can see here, I ran most of the wires that are for this cluster here. So these are the illumination lights for the two gauges, the temperature and the fuel gauges. So somebody installed these aftermarket for the brake warning light the brake warning light has power still doesn't have the other wire that comes from the pdwa whatever switch i also run the wires for the actual gauges this one comes from the voltage stabilizer here and this is the temperature sender i still don't have the fuel sender uh, other wire that needs to be here so it still needs to be run this is for this cluster here Again, illumination lights. Uh, this is the oil pressure light. Again, still missing one wire that we need to run from here to the switch on the engine. This is the voltage stabilizer. And I still have some more wires here that I need to shorten and dedicate. But you can see it's clearing up. It's cleaning up a little bit. I also grouped them here into one harness so it feels nice. From there, there's one 
bundle going out in the engine bay and it's still on top of the engine so we're gonna deal with that later yeah so there's still more wires to run but the the ones that came out of the box are all harnessed and they're going to their dedicated spots i also have i also put a boat here for ground and i'm running all my ground wires to here that are gonna be uh tightened to this boat so it's like a ground hub the wiper switch is all wired turns out that a harness with a connector for the motor came with the kit in this box so i just put it there and run it through it gets uh power here somewhere but the other four wires go directly to the switch over there so that's run and yeah i just keep adding more and more wires now for example i still need this wire that we just mentioned for the brake warning light so we have to come here and check that on the schematic brake warning lamp so this needs to be bp so black with P is purple right yeah black with purple oh i think i just saw this one actually there you go right on top we can take this wire and run it from here all the way to the engine bay and we're going to connect it later to the pdwa so anyways that's what i'm doing this side is pretty clean we still need to clean up that side but we're getting there okay we're making progress here so almost everything here on this cluster is done actually it's everything uh no the only thing is just the fan we're gonna wire that later because it has a very funky switch this is the fan switch apparently which works in very interesting way i never knew that that spitfire uses such kind of a switch but we're gonna wire that later i came to this side and most of the wires for this part of the dash are wired now including the oil pressure lamp the high beam low beam light and uh, illumination and all that stuff so now i started dealing with the hazard switch and i run into a problem this is the first serious problem that i'm running into i found few little mistakes in the diagram and i corrected them uh so i'm gonna show you that maybe at some point but now let me show you what happens with the switch the hazard switch okay so for example one of the mistakes let me show you here it says white with yellow but i never found a white with yellow wire i found yellow with white and i looked through the entire diagram here and i can't find anywhere yellow with white so i'm just What the heck? Must have been an MG. Yeah, <laughs> that's the sound of an MG disappearing from my driveway? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I never found anywhere a yellow with white wire to be used. So I'm just assuming that they reverse this. This is yellow with white, not white with yellow. So that's what I used there. And I corrected it in my little diagram somewhere. I don't know where it is. So that's one of the mistakes, but anyway. The biggest problem that I have right now is with the hazard switch. So the, the position it, in which it is right now, it is the on position. So in this case, the power that comes through the hazard flusher goes to this pin. And then from there, it is transferred to this pin, which goes to the right indicator, so of them. And then through here, it's bridged and it goes to all the left indicators including two separate dash lights and when it is in the off position these two little switches are going this way and this way and then this bridge doesn't work anymore and now the flusher for the turn signals goes to the switch and from the switch the power goes either this way and goes to these circuits here left ones or it goes this way and goes through the switch to the right circuits however the switch that we have doesn't work this way it has totally different colors here and it has different way of operating which i can show you in this diagram so on this diagram this is the original wiring of the 75 uh, spitfire 
and it has the same colors as my switch over there. It has only one direction lamp indicator on the dash and it has these two which when the switch is off these two terminals are bridged and then this is for the signals, the regular signals, then through this little switch inside now we power, power the directional flasher unit and from there it goes to the switch on the column and to the two circuits when the switch for the hazards is on this bridge is now removed so these are not connected anymore but these three terminals get connected and then the power that comes from the hazard flasher goes from this terminal to these two terminals together so it bridges all three at the same time and then both circuits are now powered through the hazard flasher so that's how it works and this is i checked this one and it matches exactly it also has a ground here but the ground on this schematic you can see this is for the little lamp that's inside here so this means that we're gonna have to modify our schematic here to work pretty much the same way as that one and for that i made a little template here so basically this is what the switch does it either connects these two or in the other position it disconnects them and connects these three so you see the hazard flasher powers this center terminal then when you pull it back these two are powered as well and the left and the right circuits are powered at the same time when it is off then the power from the signal from the regular signal flasher goes through the switch to the switch on the column and then it powers one circuit or the other separately and here i'm gonna have to do something with diodes again because these are led i think so normally how it works for the indicator for the directional lamp you see it's connected to both circuits negative let's say it's connected to one circuit positive to the other circuit left and right and it either gets power from this one and ground through the bulbs on the, the other side or the other way around but if we have led lights here these are diodes so it's not gonna sense ground through the bulb and it's not gonna work even if we use a regular bulb here incandescent not uh, led still it's not gonna work if we have leds here so that's why what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take power from both circuits at the same time but we're gonna put diodes here so now after the diodes we can connect the two circuits together but they are not gonna be bridged here permanently and then we're gonna use that power to go the, to the positive of the bulb and we're gonna put the ground to the negative so that's how we're gonna do it and i'm gonna have to modify also my schematic that i'm using this little one here and uh, send it to the owner at the end okay so this is how i modified my schematic so you see the hazard flasher goes to the center pin from there the other two circuits go and power the left and the right and when it is off now we have from the turn signal flasher power to the switch on the column and then separately into the two circuits and we have the two diodes here that go to the indicator to the indicator lamp on the dash and ground on the other side all right i don't know where i finished yesterday because it's the next day again the hazard switch all the wires are connected there's one that is going to go to ground everything else goes wherever according to that diagram that i showed you now i have here in this group these are all the wires that need to be connected to the steering column switches including the horn so these are gonna have to be hooked up to this this is for the signal switch and this is for the high beam low beam switch and the flash to pass and this is for the horn now i have bullets i can cut these and solder bullets but to be honest since everything is modified on this harness already first of all it's a custom harness and there's spade connectors everywhere already i'm just gonna cut these all of these and i'm gonna put spade connectors and it's gonna be so much reliable these it's not only hard to use these but also they sometimes they are loose inside and they don't make good contact 
it's just old design you know so i'm just gonna cut all these from here i'm gonna put spade connectors i'm gonna put spade connectors to these and we're gonna hook them up together and that's almost everything on the dash the only thing is here the um, ignition switch which also needs more wires to be run so i think after we do this we're gonna actually look at this now so this is the rear wiring harness that goes to the tail lights and i'm thinking i'm just gonna reuse these wires because they are still in a good shape looks like um Unfortunately, I don't have the other parts of these two connectors. They're probably in the old harness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them and we're gonna put spade connectors again, just like here. It would be nice if we had the other part, but it didn't come. So anyways, here in the back, I have boxes of parts that uh, the owner brought. He says that's that came with the car, so I went through this, I went through this basket here, <laughs> and nope, unfortunately we don't have the connectors. So anyways, we're gonna use spade connectors. Here, before we start doing that though, we're probably gonna uh, just jump wire those connectors with my uh, test light and we're gonna see if everything works just to confirm that the harness is not damaged anywhere which i don't think it will be when there are problems with tail lights and stuff usually it's not the harness it's these bullet connections here or ground so first we're gonna make sure that everything works and then we're just gonna hook up the wires that we need to those two connectors and then we're gonna go in the engine bay and deal with all these wires that we fished through here already and there's gonna be more to go there from the ignition switch anyways that's the plan again i'm telling you what my plan is because i don't want to keep you here for all that i'm just gonna like i said before i'm gonna i'm giving you update updates every once in a while it's not fun watching electrical jobs in progress you know what i mean <laughs> So anyways, let's get crackalacking. Chef Tash is over there crackalacking on the TR4 already. It's not fun doing electrical jobs either. What do you mean it's not fun? It's actually a big fun. I enjoy it a lot. Wow, he's a strong guy. Okay, so it's cleaning up, eh? <laughs> Most of the wires here under the dash are now to their designated spots. Only the ignition switch is not hooked up yet, but like I said, there's more wires that need to come to the ignition switch. So for now, I'm not gonna work on it. I'm just gonna shove these under the car, these last three wires, so it's better. That's by the way, the ignition switch. So anyway, I found also the reverse light switch wire. I was looking for it before, couldn't find it. Now I found it sticking out here, so that's good. Um, here I started also creating the branch that is gonna hook up to this. For now, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start identifying these wires here on these connectors. For example, I saw somewhere this one green with white. That should be one of the blinkers and green with red is the other blinker. I think it's this one. And that's where these two connect. This is for the blinkers. And this is for the marker lights. So we also need to bring here reverse lights, uh, brake lights. Oh, and there's a purple one for illumination inside the trunk, but I don't think this car has it. I don't know. I don't think we have a switch and a light here. Anyways, but yeah, I wanna start powering up these circuits to see if any of the lights here are gonna work. Apparently, everything worked except of the reverse lights. That's what the owner told me before they got disconnected. So I have the ground connected. The positive I'm not gonna connect yet. That's gonna be a much later point. So as long as I have the ground connected to the car, everything in the back is grounded. And now I'm gonna take a jumper wire and we're gonna start from jumping from the positive 
to the connectors over there. All right, I think I identified all the lights and they all work. So you know, that should be right signal. Right signal is working. Should the front be on or just the rear? No, just the rear. That should be the left signal. Mm, yep, left working. Okay, that should be marker lights. Yep. Including the license plate. Yep. And then what else do we have here? And brake lights? Brake lights. Because the marker lights look very bright. Do you have LEDs in here? Yeah. Yeah. Green with purple is this. That should be the brakes. Okay, go back to uh, marker lights. Okay. Yeah. That's the brakes. Yeah. And this should be reverse. Yep. And that's all the lights, right? Yep. Okay, so I identified all the lights and the only other wire that I really care about here is the fuel sender. And that's it. There's, like I said, there must be a purple wire for the light inside the boot, but there's, I don't see a switch and a light here, so I only need five wires in this case. Okay. Okay. The rear harness is now connected, most of it, except of the reverse lights, because I still can't find them. Apparently, what I found here is not the reverse light switch. This is going to that, I don't even know what that is, that this thing here. I have absolutely no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out, but the, the speedometer cable comes here from the transmission and then another cable hooks up from here to the actual speedometer and they're both missing but that's another story but i don't really know what this thing does but anyways this is where these wires come to so that's not the reverse i'm probably gonna have to go under the car and find those wires and hook one here the other one to power uh anyways these are hooked up i don't know if i showed you this the two column switches well guys um this video is becoming way too long i was planning to put everything in the same video from beginning to start including the testing of the harness but it turns out that we have a lot more material than uh, what we need for one video it's gonna become hour and a half long so i'd rather stop it here as i'm editing this video now all the wiring is done but uh, looking at the footage that i have left <laughs> it's a lot more so we're gonna leave that for the next time in which we're gonna hook up the heater motor the ignition switch and all the wires in the engine bay so stay tuned for that so that's where we're gonna end it thanks for watching thanks for commenting subscribing sharing and supporting me on uh, patreon and via paypal it is highly appreciated guys thanks for supporting me also by buying merchandise and if you don't know how you can do that you can go under this video on youtube and you're gonna find my um, online store where you can buy rusty beauties merchandise that's a way to support me as well or if you can't see that in the description of the video there's also a link to the online store so that's another way to support me guys if you feel like doing it so once again guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye